Alright, what's good y'all? So listen, I know this looks quite frankly bootlegged and real projetic bass, but child, I'm over here still at my um best friend granddaddy crib and y'all know when I when I get to cussing, I don't want to disrespect that old man house like that, child. Girl, he got one foot in the grave quiet as kept anyhow. I don't want to be responsible for you know putting him up in there with the amount of language that I'm about to use. On this damn episode, um, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell, become the notification gang gang, and if you really like with my channel the way y'all say y'all do, please make sure to watch those ads. All right, y'all. So listen, G status, um, it's called for the record, and they're calling it a movie. All right, it's a whole two hours. Bitch, I barely got past the first hour just getting through the shit so i said you know what i'm gonna do one half today one half tomorrow just so i can get y'all some content so this is g status atl has a season two episode one for the record the movie review part one now we see charlie charlie baby that whole gold corella deville type nonsense that you was going for bitch i won't feel in it i thought it was the most gaudiest most tackiest most i'm trying too hard to be that bitch outfit that i think i could have ever seen one of my own people up in there like i feel like when we on shows like this y'all really need to do a much better job about how y'all present yourself like i won't hear for that then we had to turn around and see you in that damn uh, shitty kitty ass outfit that you had on. Girl, if you don't take that cheap ass gaudy ass shit off and put you on something uh, 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 made by Ariel type. Like, girl, listen, whatever party city that you got that outfit from, bitch, you need to go back there and slap the bitch in the face that told you that that was cute. You need to go on ahead and get that because I absolutely hated it. And you know what else I absolutely hate? Your attitude. You're one of those girls who loves to throw shade, feeling like you're on top and you're on one. But I'm sorry, mama. It's, it's, it, and I want to like you. But your attitude is tied. And I can already tell I'm not going to see it for you. But whatever. We're just going to move right on along. So he says that he's working on his music, his craft. And he wants to be known as an artist. And he's giving a list in the party. And all of the cast was there um, that he invited, both old and new. Now, I mean, if it's one thing you ain't do right, you did right by the new people. Invite everybody there, girl. Not just the older folks. Anyway, um, so we meet our guy. Our guy used another confessional look that I absolutely hate. Like, you remind me of them Bratz mannequin dolls. Like, y'all can't tell me that that girl with all of that pasty Betty Crocker base makeup on that he had on, plus goddamn lip gloss, two shit balls on his head. Like, I'm telling y'all, that was a Bratz doll experiment gone mad. But... I gotta give you a t I gotta I gotta give you a chance. So I'm gonna give you a chance, but some of y'all need to understand something. Just because something is expensive or looks expensive, don't mean that it looks good on you. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, but anyway, our guy says that he's a celebrity makeup artist, child, um, actor, musician, and so much more. And then Charlie goes up to perform. Now, while I absolutely hate it, what the hell he had on. I was actually kind of here for the performance. Like, he did have stage presence. He commanded the stage really well. People was engaging into what it was that he was uh, talking about, what his lyrics was. And people was all here for it. Quiet as kept, I'm here for it, too. Like, I applaud anybody that is of my sector and they're doing big things and they're doing positive things. So, despite the fact that I hate your outfit and your attitude, I am here to see more of you you know, doing your little hickory dickory docking, the mouse went up the clock, and all the rest of that bull crap. Um, 
Tremel comes to the party. Love Tremel. I absolutely lived for Tremel last season. I do know some people won't see in for Tremel, but I want one of them hoes. I was seeing it for Tremel. Um, shout out to Jamel. I'm seeing it for you now. Your confessional look was everything. I was all here for it. Thank you for not guarding it up and doing doing it up too much for the cameras. Like you get my attention over looking spectacular, not looking like girl. We could tell that this is your first season. Like it was. Anywho, um, Jamel comes to the party and he says that he thought he. And Charlie Exile was on good terms, but after the reunion, they fell off. And that's what most people do. I, You know, I really wouldn't even take that as shade. I would just take that as, you know, Miss Girl was booked and busy. And Tramel, my whole thing is if you was just as booked and busy as she was, maybe you would understand and you wouldn't took it to heart the way that you did. But I'm not going to give you much, Tramel, because I actually like you a lot. Um, I'm real glad that you're here, daughter. Shout out. Um, moving on. So we see Sherrod and I am loving his confessional look. Shout out to Sherrod. Sherrod follow me. He followed me, child, um, from both his pages. So shout out to you, Sherrod. I live for you. Um, and baby, you was ready for all of the damn smoke. He said, child, I ain't got time to be playing around playing these little kitty childish ass mind games with these dirty ass hoes. And I, I listen, I'm here for it. Quiet as it's kept, Sherrod went through a lot last season. And, you know, I, I, I can't even be mad at the fact that he's handling it the way that he's handling it. I'm just going to be honest. Um, and with him, he brings in Delicious. I'm here for everything Delicious and her attitude. Okay, her attitude was everything, and I was here for it. So, Sherrod and... um. No, Shiraz says that his only issue with Charlie is that he feels like he's fake. Um, and the only reason why he showed up was because producers told him to. Now, Sherrod, I know you're not used to me giving um, show reviews. But one thing I absolutely hate is when you bitches get up here and y'all break the fourth wall. I hate it when the real reality shows do it. I absolutely hate it even much more when y'all do it because y'all should know better. Y'all need to be used to them as stepping stones and stumbling blocks. And right now, I I'm, I'm not here for y'all addressing the show, Sherrod. Now, I still like you, Sherrod. I'm just not. I, mm. Anyway, uh... And another thing that I will say is, yeah, Sherrod, I can kind of see how you would think Charlie is fake. I think that bitch is fake as as that fake-ass rhinestones that she had on that god-awful... Anyway, I know why you feel the way you feel, Sherrod. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so, Tremel and Ch uh, Charlie have a conversation. I don't mean no harm, but much like El Teddy would say, I felt my brain oozing out of all of my ears, both of my nostrils, out my mouth, out my penis, out my ass, and out my puss that's made of clay. I was completely over that overdone, draw long, drawn out ass conversation. Don't do that shit no more, G Status. I, I listen, y'all say y'all like my honesty, and I'm gonna be honest. I, I won't hear for the long drawn out scenes. Spare us, please. Anyway, um, Jamel says that the last person that he wants to see is Sherrod because Sherrod is always talking about him and throwing shade. I don't remember too much of last season. Um, I do remember that they did have a small little, you know scuffle or whatever that's what even what y'all want to call it but they was i thought they had worked it out so to hear that there's still bad blood that's there girl I'll get over it anyway uh charlie sees sherrod and delicious and throws major shade in his confessional and they wind up having a confrontation i mean you know, Charlie, you love to sit up and call people bums, but baby, we all got to start somewhere. Like, I'm more than sure your mama ain't pushed you up out her cooch wearing them tacky ass outfits that you call fashions on this show. Like, I hate when people do that. Like, instead of always constantly putting somebody down, girl, girl, you need to do what my big sis Dineva always say do. You never turn a bitch down without extending a hand to lift them up. And it seems like in all of your confessional that entire time was nothing but shades and 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 insults being thrown not only by you but by Sherrod as well. And my whole thing is, what are y'all even arguing about? 
And, and like, if, if what you all are arguing about is as dumb as I honestly think it is, the both of y'all just need to go on ahead and get over it. But I don't know. Sherrod, hit me up in my DMs, daughter. Please let me know what the tea is because as of right now, I kind of would just like for y'all to just squash it and move the hell on. Whatever happened last season was last season. Let's not carry that bull crap on to this season. I ain't got no time for it. It's a new season. It's a new day. Yeah, it's a fresh anointing. Anywho. Um, so Shirai still has beef with Akeem Tramel and Dre Samba. Girl, I'm not even about to get into all of that. We just gonna wait to talk about that when that time comes because it's hot as hell in this damn car and I'm about to hurry on up and end this. So Akeem is doing his makeup, dear Lord God, today. Girl, these bitches love to get up here talking about how they tops and they busting hoes down. I mean, girl, when do, let me, I would say this. Any girl that will ever, that's ever foolish and will see, you know what? It got to be a foolish, bamboozled, no nothing, dim with it, you know, little young gay girl, you know, fresh out, you know, fresh out the closet when they 18, about to be grown and going on their way to college. I think those are the only people that will ever allow this undercover bottom to be sitting up here trying to talk about how he's somebody top and he be doing this and this, that, the girl, it, it, listen, I have not seen it for a king since um, Chasing Atlanta, season one. Maybe that's why every time I see him, he just annoys my soul. But anyway, he invited Tramel and some dude named Chaos out to catch up. And then we see Ike and Nat Turner. Um, uh, you know what? He says that he was on Wheel of Fortune and how he has a really successful sock line that's out and how he has a voice. And, you know, he wants to be known for his music. And I'm not all the way mad at that. Like, Ike has a voice on him. Not only that, Ike is handsome as hell. The only thing that is taking the handsome away is the fact that he's very cocky and he is very into himself. And, you know, I get coming from Louisiana or the South, you know, some people might find that engaging while other people like me, other old hoes like me that was born in the 80s, really don't get down with a guy that's so much into himself as the way that he was. And not to mention, he was a little cornish, but like... He cute, but corny at the same damn time. Like, he tries too hard to fit in. And I don't want him to do that because I think he's absolutely handsome. He has a voice on him. Um, he's very charismatic. I mean, he definitely know how to talk to people. So, you know, it's really no shade. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't want him to to George us. You know what I mean? And ain't no shade, George. You know I let you down, but you are the best example for what it is that I need to use for Ike. Um, now, I also said that he moved to Atlanta so that he could be his free self because somehow in his mind, he felt like don't nobody in his family know that he like Badussy and not pussy. And Miss Girl, listen, trust me, everybody in your family know that, that you are a backdoor booty buster and you enjoy doing it. And there's no shade, but stand up in it. Like, I hate that shit, too. I don't want no more gay girls getting up here on these reality TV shows talking about don't nobody know they gay and this is a way for them to live. They like, like I hate that shit. Can we get a new, I'm sick of the coming out stories because they're all the same. I'm tired of hearing it. Um, I really hope we get to see more of you and what you have going on and not this whole fairy tale falsehood and fallacy that you done came up with talking about don't nobody around there to Louisiana don't know that you, uh, like the boy cooch girl bad but i'm here for you though ike i am here for you i'm here for you um ike talks to akeem chaos and tramel and akeem started being shady to tramel doing his confessionals but invites them out for a cookout and that's another reason why i don't like akeem like akeem is obvious you don't see it for tramel don't play that boy close to his face like girl you 50 it's no way in hell a bitch that's eligible with for an AARP card membership need to be walking around here playing these childish ass middle school, high school games that you are around here playing. Like you supposed to be mother. They supposed to come to look for you for guidance. You supposed to be Imani Van Zandt. What's uh... anyway? 
Um, Akeem feels some type of way about seeing Shamel taking Ike to the side to talk. And then he asks Ike out on a date. And that's just where we're going to end this at now. Because I'm already 14 minutes in. And there's shit going on in the background that I got to be around there for. But y'all, that's all I got. I ain't getting y'all no more today. Y'all will get part two of this tomorrow. My first impressions thus far, I love the production quality, but I can understand how y'all got 47 copyright strikes. Like, girl, it, it, listen, I forgot whether I was watching G Status or um or uh Love and Hip Hop. You know, it, it, it was just a little bit too love and hip hop ish for me. I could have dealt with a little less of the transitionings and things like that. But you know, for the most part, I'm here for it. I'm going to see what these girls is going to have to give us. I'm going to give everybody, even old ass, tight ass Akeem, a chance. But y'all know how I am. Like, when this, like, when this, look, now, I'm about to get off of here and upload this. Enjoy my best friend and my brother. And I'm going to holler at y'all hoes later. Bye.